Some of you may have heard of the Great Reset. What's the Great Green? What is the Great Reset? Great Reset. Um. So that. Is it a version I, of the New World Order? Is that what they're changing the name to? I. I. I from. You know how I feel about political outlooks and differences in political outlooks. I don't think it's a weakness. I think it's a strength. And I think America needs to get back to being able to have a conversation with people who don't agree. We learn so much from each other when we do that. You, I think, are going to hear and learn and question and disagree or perhaps really agree. Um... Like very few podcasts will uh, push you to. You're going to learn an awful lot. I've owned my private plane and uh, it's game. Ch it's the only thing wealth changes uh, is a private flight. However, and you cannot shove that onto efficiency. Um, it's the it's 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 moral sentiments. It's. I mean, everybody concentrates on wealth of nations. It's moral sentiments. Once you, dis once you disregard or destroy moral sentiments, the wealth of nations is gone. It's gone or so corrupted, it destroys itself. And the future has collapsed for these people. There's this thing I've called metastatic maternity, where when women realize that they're not going to have a baby that they're going to care for, they have to care for something else. There's really two questions there. One is the issue of parents and children. They never believe that you reach adulthood and have rights. It is not altruism, but love uh, of to each That's according man. to his need. You see, the great uh, achievement of Western culture, of European culture, was to produce, uh, to move from the Middle Ages into modern times by producing a middle class, a hardworking, thrifty, sober uh, group of people who created businesses and uh, uh, went into production and uh, they built homes and uh, businesses and so forth and they brought prosperity. But you see, uh, when you're very rich, you don't like to see prosperity. I mean, what's the good of having money when everybody else just has money, you see? Remember, the lesson of the wild is, is that mothers love their babies in a way that is violent. If you've ever seen a mother mm -hmm. having attacked you have not seen what violence is incredible violence mm -hmm. and in effect we have a lot of young women who are trying to take care of something who may not be able to have kids because the market is completely um taking away the ability to form families from our young people which politics is primarily concerned with and from each according to his ability and so forth the parent-child relation is not the relationship of adult citizens to each other. I discovered that it was actually a very serious work of uh, political science and political sociology, uh, raising an extremely fascinating set of questions about the shape of power, political and economic power, uh, in the contemporary world. By members of the global superclass, the new power elite, some of whom may well be in this audience or, or watching on TV. 6,000 or so folks who wield power on behalf of the other 6 billion people on the planet. This is a stratum that David sees as more powerful than any national government. He argues that the super class wields a particular kind of power that is of global agenda setting, as he calls it. Say, that's the trouble with you Americans. You think you're running the world. Um, and, I, and I would look at them aghast because apparently my subtle irony was lost. And I thought, you know, it would be interesting to look to see whether such a, a, an elite has emerged for the global era. I've owned my private plane, and uh, it's game ch It's the only thing wealth changes. I, I did the same thing. I mean, um, I tried to reach out to the left for a very long time. Well, let me rephrase this. I have a sneaking suspicion it came at a time, and I don't know when, where we stopped believing in the Bill of Rights. I believe all men are created equal. They have a right to, uh, you know, they have a right to speak out. They have a right to a free press. They have a right to religion or no religion. We lost those Bill of Rights as our cornerstone and so we can't agree on anything anymore.
A new Gallup poll today shows that 71 percent of no values voters are so far uncommitted to either presidential candidate. Uh, you know, we had um, the Great Society, which promised war and um, an end to poverty, which led us to the end of the gold standard and the the switching with Bretton Woods and promising the world that we'll buy their stuff. I mean, there was a huge change there. Dual incomes became, um, you know, a thing. We, we added women into the workforce, really, for the first time. So there was this huge change here. Is, is that play a role with prices? At that time, you will have the opportunity to pledge your allegiance to the prince and receive the economic mark. And those that refuse to receive the mark will be considered outside the new world order and an enemy of the state. Any questions? See, here's the problem, um, I think. It, it's the greed um, of one group and the willingness to gamble with other people's lives and the the power and establishment in the government that knows that they can get elected if they can say everybody who is at uh, this level, you're going to get a home. I've owned my private plane and uh, it's game. Ch it's the only thing wealth changes uh, is a private flight. You know, as long as they can play the Oprah card, you get a home and you get a home and you get a home, even though the math just doesn't work. Nobody cares. They'll deal with the aftermath later. So it's this, it's the collusion. It's, I'm a free market guy. We haven't yeah. done the free market in uh, how long? How long? We haven't had a free market. It's, it, it's an it, illusion. Oh, this is a really good conversation, but I think we're getting sidetracked a little bit because I think we agree um, in a very compact sort of way that not, this doesn't work. This is going to fall apart. This just doesn't work. Do you agree? If they had everything else, and it was all gobbledygook. And, uh, and it failed. And I, I, it's, it's, it's astounding to me because no one's ever responsible except apparently the little guy. They, they had faulty... Uh, uh, or or greedy desires. They were just, we'll just keep Glenn. piling it up. Glenn, let, let me explain this very clearly. Okay. Uh, the king will weasel his way in and split us up. Do we all agree it has to be unanimous? The more the police beat them up and wreck their headquarters, the better. Communists have no constitutional rights. Let me go back to that BBC article, that hit piece, calling all of this a conspiracy. Quote, so too is the nation that the uh, is the notion that the World Economic Forum has the authority to tell other countries what to do or that it's coordinating a secret cabal of world leaders. I, I urge you to go back, read the original draft. Just cut out. Uh, I like that Obama did coke and McCain probably killed some guys in Vietnam, but, you know, for me, it's just not enough. No candidate has demonstrated the total lack of moral fiber they want to see in a president. controls the United States government today. 92-year-old Henry Kissinger, the former National Security Advisor and Secretary of State. <laughs> we want to be able to look at a candidate and truly believe they have no soul. and that the corruption has gone all the way to the Supreme Court and Justice Roberts. And the corporate owners were willing to do anything to keep working their workers to the bone. Workers on strike all over were shot and killed by police during this fight for what seems like such a basic human right today. 
And that new country is not the United States. And I'll tell you, I am fighting very hard as I can using every tool in my arsenal to try to get people's consciousness up that MAGA is completely insane, um, which is called uh, direction through indirection. You're not wrong, critical theory is insane. You're, you're, you're wrong somewhere else. Give me my due, tell me that I'm not wrong about that. Uh, I can see that from the left. Tell me that the fact is that he used the old Henry II tool uh, of saying, well, nobody rid me of this quarrelsome priest. Um, in, my, in my opinion, the, the Big Bang theory and uh, the theory of evolution and the baller theory are all interlinked and they're all there to make us feel as though we're insignificant. A lot of people feel that they are not their interests are not represented by their leaders, right? I think, I think those are real questions. And so I, I think the potential for this to turn more violent to something more is they're happening. My concern is that if, if these people who feel that the system did not represent them well. We have to stop speaking through our media and we have to stop speaking through our politicians and we have to stop speaking through people who are pretending to be progressive or pretending to be conservative. You can't conserve the United States by going over and above the Supreme Court. In the late 1800s, there was an intense battle between organized labor and the country's industrial capitalists. With socialists in the leadership, the labor movement was on the cusp of winning the eight-hour workday. In 1887, seven anti-capitalist leaders in the movement were sentenced to death on trumped-up charges. Four of them publicly hanged. It was a clear message to anyone involved in radical politics. And what I found was that they had reconciled. And they'd hugged and they put it behind them. We love each other. And I have to tell you, uh, uh, I'm a hugger. I would hug you. I must have an idealized vision. Right now, our, our, many of our capitalists are like, how can I get rich? Distrust, abuse, and theft. It's not as clean cut as everybody thinks it is. These guys were deep thinkers, deep thinkers. Well, that have really hijacked the the Democrats and the progressive. The progressive era, in my opinion, is over. <laughs> We're in the Marxist era. If you d- is- define if you define progressive, I have two claims on my country. One is as a soul, and one is as a mind and pair of hands. Um, that destroys the moral basis of the market. If I see handouts being uh, or bailouts and handouts being given to large corporations, if I see laws that force me to shutter my business while uh, Jeff Bezos is celebrated in terms of how many mm-hmm. billions Amazon, et cetera, et cetera. We, what we're doing is we're undermining the moral basis of the market. Instead so, of, I say free market, I mean a market where generally people play by the rules. The, the free market is, to me, um, you're the best capitalist is the one that says, how can I help people? How can I make their life easier? And at the same time, we can't destroy the incentives to hard work and pretend that right. everything is egalitarian. That's now, that's that that is. Because I am a free market, really. No, you're like, not. I, like, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. We don't have time for this. You're not a free market guy anymore. That was then. We, we've entered into it. Let me put it this way. Imagine that you have a pie that says all activity is in this pie that's economic, okay? And a tiny sliver of it were public goods and services, which constitute market failure. All sorts of, suddenly, that little slice of the pie that represents market failure due to public goods starts growing. And imagine in a future world, crazy world, the part of the free market that your thinking applies to is a tiny sliver. We haven't gotten there yet. You're very well aware of the Great Reset, Reset. which is the public-private partnership, uh, you know, and the almost a Chinese uh, kind of model in some ways. That that requires angels to run uh, the countries and the system. Now, we know where that goes. We know that in general, it goes towards extreme levels of violence in order to beat down uh, Gini coefficients. Mm -hmm. And it goes to lack of productivity. I visited the Soviet Union at the tail end. Mm. 
you can't be a progressive and still believe in those things if you're paying attention to history. The point of being a progressive is progress. You need to update fast. And I, I don't have time to explain it, but. OK, but wait, wait, wait. But that have never existed. I mean, yes, we don't have the wis- we don't have the wisdom to take over from the market. Glenn. It's a right. self-organized. System. Right. Nobody's arguing. What I'm trying to say is, you know, mm-hmm. you can't tell I wish to opt out, opt out of U.S. Army protection. But that's not a that's not a, a, um, a classical definition of a progressive. I don't think you're understanding me. Let me try it again. Mm. Uh, we learn from our experience. Many of us believed uh, back in the 1930s that progress uh, with the failure of the crash of 29 mm-hmm. um, came from embracing socialism. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at, at all the all the cool kids wanted socialism and communism because that was the hot new idea. And I say, nobody's talking about it. What's going on is that the media is doing a cross promotion. Mm-hmm. So the conversation that's really going on about progressivism and all this stuff is not the progressive conversation. What professional wrestling is to mixed martial arts. Okay, it's a simulated conversation is that we've got a bunch of simple answers. None of them work. I could say it's all Ayn Rand or right, we need right, to right. Do, recognize that Swedish socialism. Works. Right, right, right. You know, all of this is garbage or everything is going to put everything on the blockchain. Blockchain solves everything. All of these are completely simplistic. The, the point is, is that what has gotten more people out of progress is the market. If progressive means lifting people out of poverty, about giving people hope, literacy, access to clean water and health care, a progressive has to embrace the market, period. Yeah, I end. agree with you. Take the best parts of things, conserve them, and no. throw the rest out. No, you, you, you don't realize that you're a progressive. Forgive me. <laughs> uh, no, you're a conservative. <laughs> The U.S. Has, has long been the protector of global capitalism, especially since World War II. We have over 800 bases in 70 countries and territories. The U.K. and France and Russia collectively have only 30 bases that are foreign. Mm-hmm. So the- you can't get confused about what your ideals are um, and what your idealism is uh, just because somebody's taken all your language and reprogrammed it. So none of this has anything to do with progressivism. And if it, ha- if it requires me shouting at a mob of a thousand people who are saying defund the police, uh, my point is that's not progressive. That's insane. So that for me is very important to see the tragedy of all this misuse of words, instrumentalization, uh, real criminal uh, mentality, you know, where if you stay in something like that, you have to be insane or a total, you know, uh, I, sarcastic or incredulous uh, uh, person. So I, I really will question the ethical uh, standards or morality of anybody that can digest, you know, those operations. And I still speak, you know, uh, like man of good faith to the American people. I believe that the moral question, the ethical question is very strong. It hasn't been raised enough. I don't have too much time because we can have more discussion. I'm, I'm being insisted because you want to read, you know, I have all this uh, thing written. And uh, uh, I think it's important to write them down when you come to say those. So I am insisting uh, on this concept of a big lie, how the contracts were instrumentalized to lie to Congress, lie to the press. Things just created, fabrication of event, events, uh, premeditated you know, to, uh, to uh, influence Congress or the press. And so, or when, like sometimes they say, you know, this is not for the American people, this is just for the press. You know? So I mean, I don't know how press people respect themselves, you know, but they are being used constantly. That's not progressive. That's insane. Let's not conflate insanity and a bad business model built on division with progressivism. No, your progressives are still out here. We're still smart. We just don't have a voice. We don't have a seat okay, on the so, exchange like it's, that is called the gated institutional narrative. So they- In the past few decades, especially since 9-11, the policy of the elites have been mostly united in support of American empire military power 
that maintains a repressive war against resisting groups, typically labeled terrorists, around the world. People at the absolute peak of the global power pyramid. They are predominantly white, mostly from North America and Europe, and they are the ones that set the agendas in the G20, the G7, NATO, the World Bank, and the WTO, World Trade Organization. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, um, if I could crave your indulgence, if I was allowed to speak at this point, I think I could, um, I could uh, economize on um, later questions tending to the same point and clear up an earlier misrepresentation of our position all at once. May I try? Yes, you may. To what extent did the state go to suppress black liberation movements in the 60s and 70s? They came and they sparked my heart chakra again. They started it, they jump started it, so I didn't die. Somehow that happened. They said God is the supreme being, the creator of this reality. He loves all his children, all his creations, and it's to the point where it's... Defense of the homeland. Successful conclusion of major wars or destabilize a region of critical interest to the U.S. And the preservation of movement within the global commons, the sea, air, and other space domains through which the world conducts business. Well, let, let, let's be very clear about this. Um, the globalization of trade and capital brings the world elites into increasingly interconnected relationships to the point that scholars for the past few decades have begun to talk about the development of a transnational capitalist class. There's a problem here, Gladwell, that, which is that um, there is a moral basis for the market and there is a moral basis for citizenship and they're different. It's sort of the way we used to have courts that would execute the law and courts of chancery that would focus themselves on fairness, okay? Nobody is saying, and your lives are fucking cake. It's not like it's going to change your life that much either, man. Accepting our lack of freedom is a necessary step to counteract this undesirable condition. For so long as we remain in denial of the chains of servitude that are upon us, we will do nothing to cast them aside. But when we acknowledge our chains, we can begin to push back against them and in the process, contribute to the creation of a better world, or as Camus noted. The task of men is not to desert historical struggles. But widespread ignorance as to the lack of freedom is not the only reason why freedom is retreating from the world. Rather, there is also an idea that has infected many minds and this idea, if not defeated, could prove to be the kiss of death for freedom in our generation. This idea is promoted by most politicians, indoctrinated into the youth at school and via popular culture and championed by the vast majority of talking heads in the mainstream media. He represents a something standing in the way of a news media that cannot report that the mayor of Portland is in fact coordinating with an organization it doesn't think, it pretends doesn't exist, to firebomb our own federal courthouse right. in a completely bizarre, uh, largely performative uh, ritual of showing us what a breakdown of law and order is when we I mean, no smart person talks about uh, getting rid of the police. Um, we're so oppressed that you have to understand we have a right to get rid of the police. Well, I guarantee you, people with my surname, what will happen if you get rid of the police? It's going to be a very short ride. Yeah. Don't ever tell a Jew we're getting rid of the police. Yeah. All right. Finally, the plutocrats felt safe from the pitchforks. Bizarrely, so too is Australian Green Senator Sarah Hanson Young. It might even give you some cause for concern. Perhaps you could raise them with the Senator. But having worked with her in the Senate, I will only say that birds of a feather do indeed tend to flock together. That globalization has elevated transnational corporations to more influential international roles, with the result of nation states being less significant than international agreements developed through the World Trade Organization and other international institutions. Technological mind trick is basically using advanced technology on a person and or an environment to convince targets of illusions. I mean, it's a premeditated lie, everything. So if I go to follow my outline, I'll have to go to, uh, here and you can read. I have a book, uh, thanks to Bill, that, that invited me to write it called The Packaging of the Contrast. 
he asked me to, because of the media, Institute of Media Analysis just to concentrate on that aspect. I didn't go to the war aspect or to other terroristic aspects, but just to the disinformation aspect. Uh, and uh, it's very important because I want to say that it's a big lie. If I want to use a, a word to describe what all this contra, what all Reagan rhetoric or the administration rhetoric and so on, it's just a big deception and lie. You know? It's just false. It's just more than false. It's premeditated, calculated lie for Congress, for the press, for the American people. But what we're talking about is so high tech, so advanced, we're not talking hospitals. We're not talking people, uh, people in psych wards, but it does include those. We're talking high-tech warfare here. We're talking technological advancements beyond the human comp comprehension of the mind. We're way, way behind the comprehension of the mind. That's why they're so far ahead. That's why they can get away with it. These truths have been covered up and kept from all of us for a long time under a blanket of so-called national security. This is the same blanket of national security that has prevented us from obtaining justice despite the extensive evidences. More than enough evidence for any legal procedure in this country, including congressional. But this blanket of national security has stopped us from obtaining justice. But it's not, of course, why we talk about this here? Because the only reason why they do this is because it must be done because you Americans don't know that communists are coming that, you know, they're being Hallinger texts and so on, and we, the few chosen ones, are going to protect you, save your children, save, you know, and then they talk about drugs coming and so on, but it's quite the contrary. It's the, it's the contrary, the one who are bringing, you know, the communist book, you know. So powerful if you were to feel it. The degree that we don't know how to love ourselves, his love would overpower us and we'd fucking forget who we are altogether. It wouldn't necessarily be bad, but it wouldn't, we wouldn't finish learning here. We'd just be like, all right, fuck it, we're good, we go home. So we're here to essentially find all these things and learn these things. And the Archons are playing the bad guy. The angels are there to catch you when the bad guy takes you all the way down to hell. We, I don't think we have to go that far. I think if you know the good essence, you build the good essence, none of that has to happen. I let them take my heart chakra and I let them take my mind. And uh, I was gone for 16 years in the uh, like memory suppression. When this event happened at 21, or 20, actually. I was gone for eons. I, I, there's a, I don't remember who I was before that. I do. I was stupid and angsty, but I don't I don't know who that was. I don't know what the energy of that was. I know me as a child, it feels like I'm here again, like I'm a kid again, like I was born again. And I have to learn now, just like I'm taking first steps, everything that I'm doing and everything that I'm remembering, and remember what I learned and, and don't go back into the, the dark. It all has to do with the, the dark and the light, that we shine our own light on reality when your heart is awakened. Try to give you a history that you may probably didn't know, involving a through line that is incredibly simple, that explains why everything is falling apart, and try to use as few assumptions as possible.